St. Benedict said that the life of a monk ought to be a continuous Lent. And then, because St. Benedict knows what he's talking about, he says, well, that's a little too difficult, for, especially for us ordinary people. Can you imagine a continuous Lent? Well, we don't have to. Today's the beginning of 40 days of conversion. It, I frequently, I'll frequently play that song, We Are Called, and at the end, everybody keeps singing. Try to think about that, right? At the end of the refrain, what do you say? Or most of you sing, sing, sing a new song. Well, that's conversion. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect it'll be different. Conversion. We're called to conversion. One of the other things, again, I'm continuing to paraphrase from the rule of St. Benedict, is that he says we need to add to our usual measure. What usual measure? More prayer. More almsgiving. More fasting. Deprive yourself. Deny yourself. Take up a cross and carry it. That's conversion. And we're capable of doing it. It's just a matter of having the Spirit help us to get it done. Conversion. Today is a day of fasting. And perhaps one of the things we ought to fast during this celebration today, this service of prayer, is to fast from idle talking. He actually uses those words, I believe. Idle talking. So let's refrain. Forget about refrain. Let us fast from idle talking. It's not a long time. We're only scheduled to be done by 11 minutes after, uh, 10 minutes after 11. And we can do that if we try that today. We will fast from idle talking. It is in the silence that we might be able to hear, right? That doesn't mean you, can be, you should be silent the whole time. We'll start with, this, with a song that you know very well. It is, in fact, the gospel acclamation today. And you'll hear it. Once you start singing it, you'll know what to sing. And then we'll proceed as if this is um, our convocation, what we do every day, except for one thing. We will fast from idle talking. We're even going to try that. We had this whole program plan of what we're going to sing. We're, gonna, we're not going to sing when the ashes are distributed because we will refrain from idle talk as the ashes are distributed to remind us, repent, repent, change, convert, repent, and follow the gospel. That time of silence then, as you process out to receive ashes in your forehead, if you want, you don't have to come up is a time of silence, fasting from idle talk. We might be able to hear God speaking to us at that point, right? Sing with me the opening hymn then. If today, please stand, you listen to his voice, do not harden your hearts. Sing it with me. Go ahead. If today. 
to his voice. Do not harden your hearts. Come, let us praise the Lord joyfully, acclaiming the rock who saves us. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving, acclaiming Him with psalms and songs. Sing it nice and loud with me. If today Spirit. The day of his mercy and of our salvation approaches when death was destroyed and eternal life began. As we begin this season of Lent, we gather together to acknowledge that we are sinners. As we express our sorrow, may God be merciful to us and restore us to his friendship. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may begin this, our campaign of Christian service, with holy fasting so that as we take up the battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated in silence. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing. Offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congre congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a, repro a re reproach. With the nations ruling over them, why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response will be, be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful. 
merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. My transgressions, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Excuse me. During the season of Lent, we do not sing the Alleluia. Instead, we will, we will say, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. In silence, please stand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, 
Go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your father in secret. And your father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. When you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. The season of Lent is all about repentance, being sorry, recognizing that we're sinners. As much as we don't like to, we know we've all sinned. And often, always, quite often, we've sinned. Maybe small sins, maybe big sins. But we all know we sin. And so, over the years, there have been kind of outward signs of repentance. You know, you, you may have heard of people repenting in sackcloth and ashes, if you know your scripture, right? They put on special clothes, rough clothes, to show that they were in repentance, they were sorry, they'd have ashes on their forehead. Now, ashes obviously come from something being burned. If you've ever had a fire in a fireplace, you know that as long as there's a little ember there, still just a, a little glow, you can put some wood on and blow on the, the ember and you can revive, revive the fire. But if the fire is completely out, there's nothing there you can do to get that fire going again. And so the ashes that we're going to imposed today on the forehead, they're dead. But once they were part of something living, there's something special about the ashes we use on Ash Wednesday. We don't just go someplace and grab some ashes from the ash can. If you remember back last year to Palm Sunday, right? those of you who attend churches where they have a Palm Sunday procession, the the week before Easter, when we're walking through the streets holding palms, I just have to stay in one place, holding palms, praising Jesus, hail the King. And those palms that were used last Palm Sunday to praise Jesus, and then we brought them home, maybe we put them on a crucifix or a cross we have, maybe we'll put them behind the mirror to remind us of Palm Sunday. But then if you noticed over the year, they shriveled up. When we first put them there, they were still nice and fresh, and over the year, they crinkled up. They got dry. And those are the palms that a few nights ago, where the Francis collect, we collected from all the people who had them still from last year, and Brother Francis burnt them, and the ashes we got from those palms are the ones that are going to be on your forehead today. And it's going to remind us of how we went from Palm Sunday, praising Jesus, to Good Friday when we all say, crucify him, crucify him. The same people as Jesus was entering Jerusalem were praising him, turned against him. 
That's how fickle we are. One day we can be very good people. The next day we can be terrible. One day we can be kind to our brother or sister. The next day we can be snotty. We can be annoyed with them. That's the way we are. Yesterday during group, you made your Lenten resolutions, just as you made them last year, if you were here. Perhaps they're the same resolutions you made last year. Perhaps they're different. It doesn't matter. It's a way of recognizing our sinfulness. But we also recognize that God is a forgiving God. Our God is a God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. God is there to forgive us. And so we take this special time of the year doing things we should be doing all the time. We know how hard it would be to do it all the time, and so we take these 40 days of Lent to do something special. And so we're called to fast, to give alms, and to pray. And of course, usually when we think of fasting, we think of food. We're going to give something up that we normally like to eat, but we're not going to eat as much during the day. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll cut down to five meals instead of ten during the day. But fasting doesn't just have to be from food. We can fast from lots of things. Maybe we can try to fast from bad language. Maybe we can try to fast from all the grudges we carry around. Maybe we can fast from the anger that leads us to get into fights. Maybe we can fast from uncharitable comments. And then the second one is almsgiving, giving money to the poor, to those who need it. And so one of the ideas is if you give something up during Lent, the money you would spend on that, think about giving to the food pantry or putting in a poor box in your church. So it really makes a difference then. So somebody benefits, not only you, you benefit from your fasting, but then somebody else benefits also from your fasting. You know, we can also fast from video games. And if we fast from video games, we have that time we can give to others. Obviously, we're not going to save money by fasting from video games. But we save the time that we're wasting, let's say. And we can give that to someone else, someone who needs our attention. We can fast from talking all the time. And then our, our, our alms can be simply giving a willing ear, listening to what other people need to say. Sometimes we think we always have to have an opinion. That people want us to solve their problems. But very often, they just simply want us to listen to them. They want a willing ear. So many times I've had somebody come to me and say, Oh, Father, can I, can I talk to you? Can you help me? And I sit and I listen. And they go on for 15, 20 minutes, and I just simply listen. At the end, they say, oh, Father, thank you. You've helped me so much. I didn't say a word. But you wonder how much time they've spent looking for someone who simply would give them the time to listen. So we don't have to have a lot of money to give to the poor. We have whatever it is where allowing ourselves to use better during Lent. We, have, well, we all have that time we can give. We all have that listening ear we can give. And of course, we know Lent is that time we're supposed to focus on things we should be doing anyway. We should be doing all the time. 
And so another part of Lent is praying, being more fervent in prayer, being more frequent in prayer. Maybe we only pray when we want something from God. Or maybe we only pray when we want to complain to God. But you know, sometimes God wants to just sit and listen too. Be with us. So maybe in Lent we can have that time where we're simply being with God, spending time with God, talking to God as a friend, not complaining, not looking for something, just simply saying, God, I like the fact that you're listening to me. So maybe you can take a few minutes and reflect on those Lenten resolutions you made yesterday. I hope you remember what you said. Maybe you didn't. I have the pile of resolutions to pray over so that I can pray with you in your resolutions. And then, a little later, we're going to come up and receive ashes on our forehead. And that's that public sign that we recognize that we're sinners, and we're going to look around and see all the other sinners here. We know that we're a community of sinners. But we know that we're a community that God is looking to reconcile with. That God wants us to return to him. And so one of the prayers that the, when the, the people impose the ashes on you, there's a, two different prayers they could say, but one of them is, Repent and believe in the gospel. Turn back to God. God is there waiting, eagerly, waiting for us to recognize that he doesn't want to punish us. He wants us to become his friend again. Dear friends in Christ, let us ask our Father to bless these ashes, which we will use as the mark of our repentance. Lord, bless the sinner who asked for your forgiveness, and bless all those who receive these ashes. May they keep this Lenten season in preparation for the joy of Easter. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So now give us a few minutes to get set up, and then you'll be ready to come up and receive the ashes imposed on your forehead. Let's have you sit down in silence, please.
idle talk. Right? Let's use this time in silent prayer. As I said, we had this whole program plan. I'll paraphrase again from the rule of Benedict about silence. Sometimes it's better not to say anything out of respect for silence. I'll paraphrase that by saying, I think it's better if we don't have any music right now. We know you're capable of doing this. And if so, if you'd like to receive ashes, please, we'll, we'll have you come forward and then return to your seat. We'll have um, a minister in each one of these aisles. For the freshmen, you'll proceed to Mr. Gallo and to uh, my brother Thomas. The middle division will proceed to Father Albert. You'll do this, we will all do this in prayerful silence because we know we can do it. That's correct. Um, Father Edwin reminded me, you do not have to be Catholic to receive the ashes. Just come up and receive the ashes if you feel that. You do not have to be Catholic. Please, prayerful silence. You, you may begin, Stephen.
All right. Thank you. That was worth a try, right? So let's try it together. While those who were kind enough to serve as ministers of the ashes cleanse their, their hands, let's try that. The fasting from idle talk and increase our prayer. Silent prayer right now. Let us present our needs to God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he may know the guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit as he continues to discern God's will for us and for our world. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may be an ambassador for Christ by announcing the good news of reconciliation and redemption. Lord, hear our prayer. For all present here today, that we may have the will to change our lives and the lives of others by our charity, good example, and prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are estranged, that they may seek to be reconciled to all those with whom they are in dispute. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, that they may know the presence and comfort of the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that this Lenten season will prepare us for our Passover from death to newness of life. Lord, hear hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, have mercy on your church in all its need. As we turn away from sin, may we turn to you in repentance and embrace your holiness with all our heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray together in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, pour out a spirit of true sorrow and repentance for sins on we who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may we merit the rewards you promise for those who do penance and amend their lives in accordance with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Save your people, O Lord. Show us the way to come home. We have been wandering far from your love. Save your people, O Lord. Listen, O Lord to the sound of my call for I acknowledge my offense wash me and I shall be purified save me from my distress save your people O Lord show us the way to come home we have been wandering far from your love save your people O Lord we have been wandering Far from your love, save your people, O Lord. First, thanks. Uh, where's Lodgy? Lodgy here? He was here earlier, wasn't he? We expect, uh, or we're, we're requesting, the accompaniment during these days, right, of, of the, the Jews, the Muslims, the Sikhs, the Hindus, to accompany us during this season, huh? So we can accompany you during Ramadan, during uh, Yom Kippur, during those things. So in prayer, number one. Number two, what's really important, the kids that I've had in class, last year, the UD1 girls that I had in class, the, UD, the freshman girls that I have in class now, I'm sure uh, Abbot Augustine used to do it when he was teaching religion classes, or faith class, I hate that word. Uh, I don't know why I just used it. But uh, because we're, we're spirits, Because we're spirits in a body, therefore it's it's just like it's just like uh, anything you do in activities, right? Whether it's theater, acting, how you position your body, where is it? Where's, where, there, right? How you position your body makes a difference in what kind of impact you have on somebody else, but also makes a difference on how you are able to do what you're doing, right? Kicking a soccer ball, if you try to score a penalty kick and you're leaning back, the ball's going to go where. Who put it over the top of the goal? And the, the, not this World Cup, the last one, right? It's not going to go where you want it to. Because we're spirits in a body. How you position your body when you're trying to be silent and in prayer matters. It matters. It makes a difference. So it's helpful if you're, if you're sitting up straight, when Dr. Lansing was talking about that, if you're sitting up straight with both feet flat on the floor, 
Or, or the girls do it, the girls do it easier. The guys do it all, the girls sit on their legs, right? Like in, in a lotus position, that's also, that works. But how you position your body is important. So don't ignore that when, you, when you're uh, either asked to, to, to pray or when you're at home trying to pray. I told the kids this, the girls, everybody should have a little corner of their room, a little prayer corner, where you can go and just be Just go and just be. So much of the time, I was just talking to somebody about this last night, so much of the time we think we have to do. We're always interested in doing. But first you have to be able to be and be content in your being. So therefore, sitting up straight, getting your back straight, I don't know what will happen. I have no idea. I don't know what God will say to your heart. Ask Father Maximilian. You never know. We work at this, we spend a lot of time doing this, right? You never know how God's going to work in your heart. But you have to be prepared for it, at least, by position. It makes a difference. Thank you for everybody's cooperation. Thank Doc Lansing every, and, and everybody who stood in, students, Bruno, everybody who, uh, who stood in, especially for Father Mark. Father Mark's in Holland, right? So we're, he set it all up because Father Mark is a little organized, a little organized. He has the thing set up three weeks before, sent out all the information, so, but it only works if people can carry out what he asked people to do. So we're grateful for everybody's participation. Dr. Uh, Fletcher, what's that? Mr. L ah, the the, the, Mr. Ramos, Roberto, all the people that are prayers themselves, by the way, which makes it easier for them to set up prayer opportunities because they're prayers themselves. So grateful. Dallas and all, did we broadcast this? That, uh, yeah? Great. So everybody that participated or helped make it happen, terrific. It's the beginning of, uh, I used to tell Farad this all the time, how we got 40 days and the Muslims only have 30, and the Jews only have one. I don't know how we wound up having to have 40. Maybe it's because we're bigger sinners than the Muslims and the uh, Jews, it's possible. I don't know, but it's a question to at least meditate on. Who's doing this? Okay, so when I dismiss, we're going to do it by row, okay? So the first row is going to go, and then the second row is going to follow, okay? Middle division, please stand. Christ among us.